Okay, so let's start with the names, if uh, so we know everyone. Melanie. Uh, Karen. Michael. Tony. Tony. Robin. Terry. Bob. Cat. <laughs> yeah, so you want to start it, please? Uh, Thank you. <laughs> we start off. Well, I start off with it. I don't know what anybody else does it, whatever they cares to. Mm -hmm. I can't teach you anything here and I can't tell you anything. Understand that right from the start. All I can do is point toward and ask you to look to where we're pointing to for, to see for yourself. Because if you understand what we point to, you realise that nobody can ever tell you anything and nobody can ever teach you anything. And the other way I'll put it too, I'm not speaking to anybody. I'm not speaking to any mind. I'm not speaking to that body, mind, belief you've got about yourself. I'm speaking to that I am that I am. That sense of presence, the awareness of being present, sort of awareness, that expresses through the mind is the thought I am, just to this, nothing else. So they call it non duality. Well, a lot of people call it that, call it all sorts of other names. And again, when you understand what we point to, there can't be duality with not duality. There can't be non-duality without duality. So they're one and the same thing. And it's based on a, a lot of it's based on adva teachings of Advaita. And some of these people around, as the next call it, Neo-Advaita. A new Advaita. If it's Advaita, how many Advaitas can there be? Uh, they've got a tag on it and describing it. Just the same as consciousness. They divide consciousness, super conscious, subconscious, and every other different sorts of consciousness. How many consciousness can there be? So what we point to, non-duality we call it, that's one without a second it means. There's only the one. And you look in all the scriptures closely, all of it, basic tests from all the different religions, different religions, they all point to that one essence, the one. So to use, tells you in the Bible, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. So in other words, God's only a word, a label. And how many words were you born with? You weren't born with any words. But when you reach the age of about two, two and a half, your parents, you started to learn words from your parents. And they were reinforced by your schools, your society, your peers and everybody, and yourself. We've taken the word to be the thing. It tells you in the Hensing Ming, where it ends, a beautiful little scripture. The way is beyond language. For if there's no yesterday, no tomorrow and no today. But we were brought up with words, and we use the words. If you investigate the words, you'll see the words not the real. Have a look at that and see for yourself. Can you drink the word water? Can you wash it? Can you swim in it? Will you drown it? You won't. Does the word fire burn your mouth if you speak it? It doesn't. So you recognise that there's no word that is the actuality. But we use words. And understand that and the words can be utilised and used. <coughs> You're taken to be the thing and one of the words we've taken on is I or me, myself. And we believe we are this personal self or ego. And you'll read in all the texts, the ego is the problem. The belief in me and mine, that's the problem. The only problem we ever have is the ego. Well, you need to look at that and see that this myself, try and find that myself you're talking about. Terry points that out beautifully when he points you to look into to see and that solid seeming substance that's left after everything is God. When you investigate it, it falls apart because there's really nothing there. It's only been reinforced that long it seems to be something solid in the body. But there's nothing there. You understand the ego is a fiction. That never existed. Grasping that and realising that and recognising it 
That is a realization. That is a liberation. Liberating from that personal self. And the book in the Buddhist scriptures will tell you that. It's called self-realization through seeing with naked awareness. Anybody want to wear in this room right now? No, you're aware. But is that awareness naked? Or is it adorned by all sorts of words, thoughts, ideas and concepts? Labels, but not a word. And that's what's happened to it. It's no longer naked. And that's what's brought me back to. Just seeing that ever fresh present awareness, the sense of knowing, the sense of being, the recognition of your awareness. You're not unaware right now, so you must be aware. And abide as that. Another way they put it in the scripture, let it rest in its uncontrived singularity. Not contriving it by putting any meanings or concepts on the words, just leave it as it is, rest in it, relax in it. And you'll see the freedom from the beliefs that you are this separate entity. And that's all that needs to happen. So you can take over for a minute. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it should be enough, really. I mean, what else to say? If, uh, if ego is a fiction or, or sense of separation, of separate self, it's just a belief. So the only thing to be done is to question the belief and see if that's true. It may feel real because it has been reinforced throughout the whole life. It has been conditioned. Just the same way Bob often uses the example, like for how many hundreds of years humanity believed that the earth was flat because it has been conditioned. Nobody would question it. The same way we were brought up to believe that there is some doer there that is doing things. That is, and, and we kind of uh, were brought up and we were learned, we, we were taught to actually get approval by satisfying other people's expectations, by doing things, modifying our behaviors to get more love and as children that was a survival strategy we did need to we, we depended on on others we depended on pa on parents so we did actually uh, adopt like the body mind the whole machinery adopted to the way it needed to 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 keep the machine safe and part of this adaptation process was when we were acknowledged for something oh see little johnny how beautiful you ride the bicycle or what a beautiful picture you painted. He wouldn't have a clue he did it. It just happens. For a little child, nothing has been done. Things just happen moment to moment. Life is happening in its all magnificence. To learn to condition ourselves to take credit for certain actions and put blame on other people for other actions is a conditioning that was reinforced for years and years and years. And if you are really honest with yourself and you looked at, look even at the most crucial moments of your life when you think that you took the decision and you cho chose your path or you chose your profession or your partner, see how much it was completely conditioned and dependent on the environment. There was a psychological research showing that if you met the very same soulmate with who you spent maybe 30 years of your marriage in different circumstances, when you were in a different mood or you were threatened, it wouldn't appeal. It needs so much of the, the contribution of the whole universe is required for the life to go a certain way. But then the conditioned belief or the ego says, no, I've chosen it, I decided. So this is basically a belief that has been conditioned and has been practiced and has been repeated for the lifetime. So if you, it may help to honestly just look back and see if really the crucial decisions happened because there was a doer doing any process of deciding or it was just a search of life pushing the body certain way, certain direction. We say the animals don't have ego, they don't have sense of separate self, but they're still moving, they still move away from danger, they move towards pleasure. And so, so that movement, the body and the computer that is running the body is natural. It doesn't need any force inside that would make choices, decisions or judgments. That 
false insight that we identify ourselves as, us, or we identify with it, is basically a commentary. It's basically the mental process. When we learn words and we learn describe descriptions of everything, <coughs> we, we, started, we started commenting on things. As something is happening, I say, okay, I translate it to the reference point me, this is happening to me, or this is happening for me, negative thinking, positive thinking, whatever. But the commentary line became a, covered up the, the reality of the spontaneous functioning of life. Like, to make it even more ridiculous, I really like when Bob brings up these examples. I'm breathing. Like, really? I'm breathing. Am I really doing it? Because, well, I can, to a certain extent, it feels like, modify the breathing. Yeah, sure, I can stop the breathing for one uh, minute or whatever. But can I do it if I don't have the thought in my mind to do it? So basically, even every, sing every simplest and a single function that is happening is happening because of the collaboration of the infinite number of forces. I'm breathing because there is an air, because there is, a, there is a body, because I had a thought to modify my breathing, because I'm sitting here. It's a thousand little things that contribute to the final outcome, which is the action. Same with making decisions or taking choices. Same with thinking. Like this particular thoughts will not arise in my head when I'm busy cooking. Particular thoughts will show up when I'm... It, it, they just totally in tune with the, with the functioning of the, of the body. And if particular thoughts will, will not arise, particular actions won't happen. And I can't choose my thoughts. I can't even guess what am I going to be thinking about half an hour from now. I don't know. And none of you know if, you, if you're really honest. Nobody knows that. So thoughts are happening just the same way as sounds are happening just the same way as the heart is beating or the blood is traveling through the, through the veins in the body and transporting oxygen. Nobody does it. It just happens. Life happens. And life is connected. Everything, well, saying connected is, 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 to, is to be used as a pointer because it's not really a connection. It's oneness. It's, it doesn't even have to be connected because connection assumes that there is more than one that is in some sort of a communication. Well, it is one appearing as many. It is one water appearing as many waves, or it's one emptiness vibrating into different forms, shapes, patterns. One silence vibrating into different sounds. That same one appearing to itself as other, as the form. That's why they call it Maya or illusion. Because suddenly, in the space of emptiness, we have different forms. We have the body. We have the body that is equipped in the in all the instruments that let it receive the the seeming outside world and we have the outside world which is communicating transmitting and receiving itself as itself so there is a there is a whole lot going on in the appearance in the manifestation but all that would not possibly have happened if there was no screen or space in which it can appear so non-duality and again we use the word, but we are not teaching non-duality. We're not teaching Advaita. We are basically relating our own experience. Once it is seen true, and what, once it is known for what it is, it becomes very basic and very simple. Everything is known for what it is. Is that Advaita to say that thought is a thought? It doesn't need religion. It doesn't need system. It doesn't need a new Advaita or, new, or whatever to see the thought is thought. And now, if the thought appear in my head about me being inferior or me being separate, that's a thought. That's nothing. That's a thought. But because of the years of conditioning, that thought for many, many people and for most, oh gosh, big part of my life was my reality. It was believed. That was me somewhere there, the doer, who would decide the actions, who would make mistakes constantly, and who would take wrong choices, and who would have to pay, and who would waste the potential 
because I had so much of a potential, I was wasting it because I only had this amount of attention and I had to put it there and it couldn't go anywhere else. So this identification with the idea of being an entity, being a doer and holding responsibility for the thoughts, holding responsibility for the heartbeat, for the sounds that are appearing just the same way as thoughts, was my reality. And I didn't question it because nobody around me questioned it. My parents, my teachers, my gurus, people that I considered way wiser than me, why would I doubt them? Like, who am I to even doubt people who were the whole world for me? So that was the reality, and that still is the reality for a great majority, vast majority of people. And the consequence of assuming that identity of the doer or choice maker or decision maker or someone, some entity that is different than the world, that's separate from the world, it costs a lot. It costs suffering. It costs the sense of separation, brings up the vulnerability, brings up the idea that now I am here and the world is out there and it is threatening. It can hurt me. I'm the body or I'm the mind. I'm something else than than the rest of the world. Whilst Bob is showing it quite often in the spiel, how the body is totally, totally one with the world. How the body doesn't exist without the elements of the world, without the air to breathe, without the water, without the matter that is made of, without the space in which it appears. Body is the world. It is just one element, like everything else is made of the same elements. Or if we look into the science, Everything else is made of the same field of probability, the spinning sort of particles creating some, some sort of a matter, which is basically energy. So this feels like the this feels like solid reality, and the entity inside feels like something that is really hard to question. This feels like experience. It feels like truth, but. This is the point when you are attracted to looking into those ideas. It means there is some sort of a calling from the deeper field of consciousness or awareness that will give you the courage to actually look and question everyone, question the whole world. Like, this is not about acquiring a belief that now I feel I'm separated, so now I will drop the idea of separation and I will be, become connected. Now I believe that I'm one with the world. No, this is, if, if I trade one belief for the other, I'm in the same sort of a shit. I mean, my life may be a little bit more kind of optimistic if I trade the negative belief for the positive one, but it's not about trading beliefs or enhancing the beliefs it is about honest, genuine investigation to figure out what is true when the belief is absent. Sometimes the teachers, the great teachers like, yeah, like Nisargadatta or Bob, they say, you're not the body. Why? Because you think the whole your life you condition yourself to believe that you are the body. So now if the great guru will tell you, no, you're not, perhaps it will counteract the belief that was there before and you will stay with oh okay everybody else told me i'm the body he told me i'm not gosh but he's the greatest sage of all times yeah wow who am i gonna believe this is not about belief figure it out for yourself like really find out for yourself see if being the body is anything else than just a belief like pause the thought for a moment and see if you're still the body See if that's true, that I'm the body if I don't have a thought. And when I say thought, I mean mental images as well. Because that's very often how the people, visual, kinesthetic, auditory, whatever. But very often people s hear the thought and see the image right away. So if I don't have the idea that I am the body, if I don't have mental image of being the body, am I really? Am I really? What is the experience? you will see that experience is totally unknowable. Uh, well, it's, it's known, but it's unnameable. It's undescribable. And it has nothing to do with having skin and bones and liver and legs and eyes. Nothing. Pure experience of existence without the idea of being anything whatsoever. 
the body, the mind, the entity, the ego, whatever, whatever the idea is, if that idea will be pushed aside for a moment and we check the pure experience, what it is like to be whatever, to be, to be me, or who am I, if I don't assume any mental images or pictures or, or beliefs that I learned from other people while I learned words. Now you're going to be left with pure experience of being. You cannot say that I don't exist now because people often say, okay, there is no me, I believe it, so I don't exist. Really? Who's saying it? So the existence is there. There's not to, it is not to find yourself absent because who would be finding yourself absent? It is really about finding out what's unnecessary. And mental images, thoughts, any sort of a jacket or suit of identification, I'm this or I'm that, is unnecessary for functioning because animals do very well without it. And they live in the moment. They do whatever is necessary. They, they're doing all right. And we are doing it also many, many times throughout the day when we don't hold on to the ideas of ourselves, when we are following our passion and we are completely one with whatever it is, music or dance. There's no idea of... Well, it depends how deeply you're taken by the passion, of course. But there are moments throughout the day in our life when there is nothing wrong, when there is nothing that needs to be found, when there is no urge to find great enlightenment or become a sage or whatever, become something better or different, when there is no wanting, when there is no desire, when everything is just as it is and is all right. And this is called natural state state in which everything is fine, I don't need anything to be different than, than, than it is. Absence of desires, ab absence of attachments, that's how Buddhists describe it. This is natural state. On this basic natural state, pure existent, existence, free from any need to alter, modify or correct it or change it, from any need to become better or richer or grow or whatever, or become somebody. This is the natural state. Now, on that base, on that basic screen of the natural state, now there appear ideas, there appear desires, there appears longing, the sense of contraction, the sense of I'm not enough, I'm wasting my potential, or I am only a person, or I don't look as much as uh, as good as, as I should. Those are thoughts, those are ideas. Those ideas when they are believed in, when they are embodied, when they are when the the life says I am this idea, life embark on that thought, identifies, make itself identical with the thought. I'm not enough. That becomes the experience. That how life experiences itself as other. And now the same life is being called to recognize the, the very mechanism of identifying with the idea. The very moment when the mind makes something real, the life embodying idea, I'm separate, I'm a person, that very movement of embodying or embarking on that, going for that ride, is also being known. It's being known in the, in the, in the basic <coughs> screen, in the field of awareness. So now, when the movement happens, I'm the body or I'm the mind. And that movement, that vibration is recognized. It's not a problem anymore. Now it is a content of awareness. Now that very vi vibration that's saying I'm the ego and I feel the contraction and I feel I'm the body, this is all content of the awareness. If there is, if there is a wakefulness that is aware of that very movement, that's it. You are that wakefulness. You are that screen. And a movement, whatever is the content, whatever is the content, whether, whatever are the sounds in the room, whatever are the sights, whatever are the feelings, whatever are the vibrations in the body, outside the body, this is all content. You are the knowing of it. If you are the awareness, the knowing, you are equally the knowing of the sound of the heater and equally the knowing of the hunger in the stomach. 
equally they are both objects in the field of awareness and you are the awareness in which the objects are appearing if the object in awareness is yes yes but i'm still contracted i'm still not this yet i'm still feel like i'm feeling i'm ego i'm separate that's just another content that's just another appearance on the screen of awareness and when it is recognized for what it is just the thought because the thought is believed it gets emotional component it gets physical component that's how it happens if you believe in fairies you will start seeing fairies that's how it happens that's how the reality is being created as a child you believed in santa claus santa claus was co coming to your house you could even see it somewhere see him whatever so this is this is the power that life has to make whatever is being believed real but this is not the mind power it is the life that is playing is making the reality as it is it is like a collective the whole display is like a collective hallucination and the way mind works in this it brings up the stories like this because it's playful because it's infinitely <coughs> creative because it is made of the same substance as the whole universe as the whole awareness so it is brilliant it is beautiful so if you ask yourself a question why did i do this or that or the other you will come with justification just like that the mind will come up with the story like the story when you let's say you drive the car and uh, someone jump right in front of you and you push the brake ah oh, why did you do that and now you come with justification really you didn't even do it the body has been trained to react spontaneously but the mind comes up with the stories that's what it does and when it is recognized for what it is when the stories are seen to be just stories they sweet they beautiful they are not dangerous anymore the story oh i'm unworthy <laughs> wow what a story like if i don't believe it i can laugh at it i used to believe it it hurt <laughs> but right now if well the stories like this don't even come up anymore maybe they do but they ignore it so i don't really know about them but they still appear in others and i don't believe in them like oh gosh if any if you would tell me that you are unworthy i can just laugh i mean it's it's a horrible thing to laugh at someone's misery but this is laughable because how could you how could you be anything less than pure perfection if you are made of that very substance that created the whole beautiful maya the whole appearance you are that brilliance that absolute creativity and and love that created and appeared appears appearing moment to moment as such a complexity and such a diversity and such a beauty and that include the judgment over it because of course some of it if from the relative perspective is not that nice and beautiful some of that is painful some of them is dark sure it has to be dualistic it has to be appearing in in pairs of opposite if the whole evil would be removed from the world the evil the greatest evil would be a broken nail and it would make people suicide because everything is relative without the relativity there is nothing so to love everything as it is doesn't mean to not help someone who suffers because that one also is a natural functioning that is also i've seen many videos of animals helping each other like gosh dogs helping an elephant or dolphins helping a dog it happens or it doesn't this is a functioning it doesn't require the story it doesn't require <coughs> becoming someone or is life is really simple once it is known for what it is is very simple and once it stops being dangerous once i don't have to defend myself all the time is very lovable also because i'm looking at magnificence of my own self appearing as every scene and every sound moment to moment and is always fresh and new and is there and it could have been nothing and in fact it is nothing it's just an appearance but knowing both of it is just a celebration really no the life known from the perspective in which there is no relating going on anymore 
life becomes really, really simple. It doesn't mean that things start appearing differently or sounds start sounding differently. No, this is natural state. It is there all the time, underlying the, the layers, the thick layers of beliefs and identification. Under that the idea that I'm the doer, I'm the body, I'm inside the body, or I'm whatever, there is that natural state, that pure, simple awareness of whatever is happening, the acknowledging of whatever is happening. Now the line of interpretation on the narrative goes on top of it. That's just mental noise. That's just additive, just like a like advertisement going over the movie. It doesn't matter. It's just part of the appearance. And it is and it's magnificent part because it, it has the potential to create universe over the universe, inside the universe. Like I can think right now about my parents and they appear in the space of my head. They exist now. Whilst when I don't think about them, this is what exists. And they don't. So the potential of mind is absolutely wonderful, is to be loved. But when I start taking it seriously, when I start taking it for a gospel, and I hear the thought in my own head, oh, you will amount to nothing, and I will go and start drinking or taking drugs, that's not fun. But if I know, oh, that's just a thought, fine, cool, it doesn't matter. So the... To, to find, to come back to that simplicity of life because it doesn't really have to be found. It is there all the time. It's there all along. It's just slightly covered by the layer of a story that is put on top of it. And that story is a sad story about me. That this is really, there is some me, some separate entity, some mask, some pers persona there. That is, and it is all about them. If that's investigated and life is seen for what it is, there is nobody there. There's nobody home. Yet there is pure existence. Yet there is pure knowing about being. Yet there is pure witnessing of being. Not a witness, but the witnessing, experiencing of being. Life is experiencing itself. Life is loving itself. It's, it's dancing in front of itself, for itself, as itself. So without that that relating, that layer of, of translating the, wor the world, everything that happens as something that happens in the relation to, to the entity made of past experiences and thoughts and whatever, the collection of, uh, of memories and, and ideas that are kind of bound together and they are somehow kept together. And yeah, it's a miracle even how it is kept together because... I don't know, I used to have that construct for so many years, over 40 years, that construct of personality. And once it fell apart, I have no way to reconstruct it again and believe it. Because even if there's some sort of a past moment memory will come up, there is, not, there is no glue in it. Like there is the, the life doesn't really believe in it anymore. Like I can't be this, come on, it's just, once it is seen through for what it is, it can't be believed anymore. So if you really look inside and see and check who are you consider considering yourself to be? Are you considering yourself to be the body or the bundle of thoughts? Very often there is strong identification with the sex of the body. I'm woman or I'm man or I'm whatever, gay or straight or whatever. There is the, or I'm Christian or, the identification is endless. The description of the personality pattern and taking it to be me. I can describe the personality or the looks of this body, but this is, or any other body. But description is not the described. I'm not the description. The fact that the body has this hair or these eyes or whatever, what does it have to do with me? What does it have to do with the awareness of presence? of pure being, of pure existence. The moment I stop the thought and I stop mental images, I don't even know how this body looks like. I'm looking out there, I can't see the body. How do I know that the body didn't change in an instant? I don't know. So it is really about investigating what's true in absence of beliefs. 
question every belief. You were told you are the mind, you were told you are the body. Is that really true? Is that true? What's left if I put it aside? What am I? Because the only thing that can't be denied is the awareness of being, is the fact that I am. If I look ahead and I don't even know the shape or size of the body, I'm just being. I don't know where I am. I don't know where the body begins or where it ends. I don't even know if there is any body. I, there is a sensation of vibration or sounds or sights or maybe contraction or maybe pain. But all I am is the awareness of the sensations. I can't even locate them. I can say they are within me, just like every sound is within me because I'm aware of it. Just like every vibration or sensation, I'm the awareness of the sensations. So I can say, I am. Yes, there, there are sensations. Yes, I won't deny it. There are sights, there are sounds, and there are sensations in something that I would project that is inside or outside the body. But if I stop projecting, they're just sensations. They're plain sensations. So that's all I can say. There is an existence. I can say, I am. Like Bob starts the spiel, I'm not talking to bodies. I'm not talking to minds. I'm, I'm talking to I am, the sense of existence, the sense of presence. So I can say I am. There is a sense of presence. But if I don't dress it up as any particular object that possesses the sense of presence, there's just presence. It doesn't have beginning, end. It doesn't sh have shape, form, distance, anything. It just is the awareness of presence. And this is what I am. And this is what you are. And this is what everything is. Because it's just one. It's just one awareness of presence or consciousness or life that is expressing and experiencing itself. It's waving itself. The emptiness of it is cognizing emptiness, intelligent <coughs> emptiness. They're all labels. When I'm using all that labels, none of it is it. Like cognizing emptiness is not it. Awareness of presence is not it. I am is not it. They're just words. They're just pointers. But they're pointing to the same thing. Because we had a friend who was asking questions. Yeah, can you explain me the difference between God and the awareness and the emptiness? Because I, it's just too many things. It's just too heady. It's too intellectual. There is just one. There is just one. Whatever word we use, we are pointing to the same one. Cognizing emptiness, God, awareness, presence, self, they're all pointing into the same one. So people like certain words, certain words absolute or source. They resonate with them more than the word God, which creates the mental image right away with the guy with beard or whatever. So words are not important. What is being pointed, we call it cognizing emptiness because it's not just a void. It has the capacity of knowing. It has the awareness. So it is aware, it is conscious of itself. It is a life, it is being. It is present. It is acutely aware of its own existence. In our case, it is also aware of content, but the content is itself. It is a nothing appearing as the form, emptiness being a form. Doesn't matter. What matters really is the awareness of itself. The resting in itself, on itself, in the singularity of itself. So this is, this is what, what we are pointing, and we can call it Advaita or non-duality, but this is not really about any school of teaching. This is not about any philosophy. It doesn't matter how it's called. Base of all traditions, Bob often shows, is pointing to the same one. Christianity is pointing to the same one, saying everything is omnipotence. Everything is one omnipotence, omnipresence, omniscience, one. Or God is that, whatever, God is that, but the same thing. Base of all traditions is pointing into it, but really what it is about is about coming up from the certainty that you find in yourself. Teaching anyone anything makes no sense. Bob says, I'm not teaching anyone anything because there isn't anyone here to teach in this body or in this body or in that bodies. They're all empty. This is only the consciousness interacting with itself. 
There is no one that could teach you anything. And it doesn't mean that you can't take a lessons of French language or, or cooking lessons. That's a different story. We are talking about the awareness of presence that cannot be taught, that can only be recognized, because it is being cognized. It is completely known to every one of you right here, right now. Like when Bob asked, are you unaware? Or, you, or are you, do you exist? Yes, you do. Even if you say, I don't, you have to exist to say it. So you already exist. And you know it. You know that you exist. And that's it. That's it. This is about knowing of existence. But because we were conditioned since childhood to entertain ourselves with something else than that singular awareness of existence, we developed a habit to going to the conceptualizing imaginary world that comes from the mind. And the imaginary world has created all that beautiful appearance. And it also backfired and created the persons that have responsibility, that commit mistakes, and that become suicidal or suffer. This is all from that habit of leaving that basic sense of existence, the loving to be, the Satchitananda being, knowing that we are, and loving to be, joy of being, and going to imagination, and imagine other places, other people, other stories, imagining tomorrow, imagining yesterday, because even, even uh, memory is imaginary. It has been proven many times by science, by asking people to reflect on the past memory every time the story was different. Mind comes up with spontaneous stories that are different every time. Even the memories cannot be relied on. They are not written in stone. They are imagination. They are a little bit different way of imagining. But everything that is not right here, right now, <coughs> is imagination. And we were conditioned to entertain ourselves with the imagination. And we were conditioned, and, and, and we got so desensitized to that basic love of being that we lost touch of it. Because going to the head and imagining other countries, other people, or my own drama, it is so juicy. It is so intense. We got used to the intensity, and we lost the basic sensitivity that basic sensitivity that comes back from, that comes from just resting in the space of our own heart without words, without feelings, without stories, just being, just deliciousness of being that is not stolen or hijacked by this, by this activity of the mind. And this is not to say there is anything wrong with the activity, because when the activity is recognized, it's fun, it's nothing wrong. I mean, the problem starts when the activity of the mind is taken to be a reality. And the me that is part of the activity of the mind, because the, most of the stories will be always about me, what is going to happen to me tomorrow in 10 years or 20 years, or what they think about me, or what am I going to do, or what is my tendency, or my... It's always self-obsession. It's always about me. The mental activity is relating to the me. Most of the thoughts will be thoughts about... The, there will be a presumption that there is an entity me that is resolving some situation or problem or struggling with something. While this all heady sped space with the pres presumed me is just imagination. <coughs> Funny enough, the neuroscience have discovered long time ago that the selfing, the uh, separate sense of self, actually there are two senses of self, one that comes with the language, it's in the left hemisphere, and another one that comes with the movement, the so-called so natural self. They, the, the self that comes with the language, with learning words, the self that we call ego, that we call self-identity, is created by the same part of the brain that creates hallucinations when you take drugs or when you're very tired. It's, we are hallucinating. We conditioned our own computer there to hallucinate sense of separate self and to relate and translate the world conceptually as relevant to that hallucinated self. While this movement, how fascinating is that? How beautiful, how rich, how juicy, how intense and beautiful is that when it is recognized. 
from the space of being, from the heart. Now you're watching the movie. But this movie is not about you anymore. It's just a wonderful movie. It's just a movie that it doesn't matter that the, that the hero in the movie is going through bad times or good times or is happy or is sad or is sick or is healthy. It's just a beautiful movie. We're watching that imaginary, that whole manifestation, this whole imagination from the place that feels like home, from the center of being or heart, from the heart of being, the core of being. You want to say something? No, not at the moment. Go on, you go on. If you're sick of it, give it to somebody else. Okay, give it to somebody else. (laughs) Teddy, you want to say something? Um, What kept kept coming up for me was um, how incapable we seem to be, particularly around this seeking, how incapable we seem to be, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's incredible, really. Um, because this is experienced directly. So it's not something that we can grab a hold of conceptually and go, yep, yeah, okay got it, now I understand that. And all we'd have, if, if that was the case, is just another idea. Yeah. So we'd still be buying into the illusion of what's going on in our head. You know? Can you... And uh, the, to give you an example of direct experience and, and, and being absolutely honest, okay? So everyone sitting in the room here tonight and if I was to ask everybody in the room, is the moon in the sky tonight? Bet my balls on it. Excuse the language, but I, you know, I bet my life on it that everybody would say, yeah. There's a moon up in the sky tonight. How do you know? Is that currently your direct experience? Or when I ask that question. Is there a moon up in the sky tonight? Bet again for sure, an image of a moon flashed in everyone's head. Yeah. See the image and go, yeah, of course there's a moon up in the sky. It's night time. The moon's usually always there, usually. There's a moon up in the sky. So, you know, it's about being uh, absolutely honest and absolutely real about what you actually see or understand or know right now your direct experience right now you know um, i sort of know there is a moon out there but in my experience there's no moon not right now there's not is there no no, no. no. is there another world is, is is there a world out there um no not right now there's not is there this is all there is right now yeah, yeah. and even standing out there if you don't label, it's not a moon. Mm. There's some sort of... Mm. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but, some effect, maybe. But, but whatever it... You know, it's a bit like... that. What's that saying, if a tree falls in the forest, does anybody hear? Yeah, no one's around, does it still make a sound? Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's no. just a you know. No, it's a different well, one. If the man is speaking in the woods and his wife is not there, is he still wrong? Yes. There was also there was one about a bear shitting in the woods to anyone. <laughs> it was just the same. Nobody's ever sat in the sun today. Nobody's ever sat in the sun. Yeah, right. <laughs> mm. yeah. Yeah. So it's a just it's just about being directly honest with what you actually know, always right now, always right now. And if you start to do that, what you'll actually see is how much we do actually get caught up in here and conceptual ideas and understandings and, you know, my world right now is right here doesn't extend any further than right here. That's it. My experience right now is right here. And right now. Is there a moon in the sky? No. Is there a universe out there? No. You sitting there? Yeah. Yeah. That's my direct experience. 
So when it comes to uh, actually looking, actually looking, you know, if, if you get the chance, listen back to Kat's spiel, what she says, you know, and she goes over the same thing from start to finish with a slightly different tact, different take on it, a slightly different take, you know, and hopefully one of those will land somewhere, you know. Yeah, it only needs one. Just, only yeah, one. that's it, you know, it just kind of needs to land. So if Bob isn't speaking to anybody and he can't teach anybody anything, why is he bother speaking at all? Why is he talking? Why is he talking, one? And if he is talking, if he's not speaking to anybody and there's, no, and there's nothing here to be taught or learnt, what's going on? Yet, this communication still comes out of him. So, who or what is it that he's speaking to, if not me? Not me and my body. And we get told we are already that that we're looking for. <laughs> Fucking amazing. That that we're looking for, we already are. Like, I don't know, it's like a, a shoe walking down the street you know, trying to find its soul. It's fucking right underneath the shoe. It, it, there's its soul there. And it's the soul, soul. That's the one, the one, you know, but off it goes, trying to find what's, you're already that. Yeah. Now, why is it that, we're, that, that we don't see that? Why is it that we're not uh, aware of that? Why is it that we can't cognize that? Because of everything that Kat was just saying. Everything that, that Kat was just saying. We, we're, so hypnotized into believing that what I am and what the world is, what others are, is all based on what I think. Hypnotized. That becomes our reality. Which is kind of odd because everyone's got different stuff going on in them. So which is the real reality? Like really? Which, which one's the... <laughs> There's either one reality, <laughs> or there's bloody eight billion of them, you know. Yet, Mr. the other day, I was like, if what I think about myself is true, then by summation, everything that anyone ever thinks of me is absolutely true. And I don't. That can't be right. <laughs> no. <laughs> like it can't, can it? Like, yeah. and that's all I could think. If that, yeah. if, if that's true, then that has to be true. Like I have to. If I was mean to someone in like fourth grade, yeah. then I'm just this asshole walking around. That's yeah. that like the reality of who I am. Yeah. In, yeah. So, but and, it still and doesn't. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I feel that, and then um, yeah. And the irony is, you know, in somebody else's eyes. So that's crazy. In, in somebody else's eyes, <clears throat> like you could be sitting over there and going, "I've got terribly low self-esteem. Mm. I'm an asshole. Should have seen what I did in third grade." Oh my god! Like, <laughs> whatever. Whoa, Terry. Just stories. It just it could be anything, you know. Like, should have seen what I did when I was an alcoholic. It could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. And we take all that to be who we are. Yeah. Yet somebody else can be sitting right opposite us and see something completely different. Mm. Absolutely, completely different. So where we get into trouble is isn't so much what others think about us it's what we think about us mm, yeah yeah or you know I, I've said it before you know you can have a um, what seems to be this is really good you, you can have what seems to be a conflict with another person argument disagreement what it, whatever it may be you know what you will start to see is you actually start to see the way this thing operates can only operate in one way, by the way, dualistically. That's the only way it can operate. Once you actually get fully what that really actually means, it's easy to watch. It's really, really easy to watch. It just kind of swings like a pendulum, you know. So that um... conflict. Yeah, that conflict. Thank you. That um, um, 
conflict that, that we think is happening between myself and somebody else isn't. The conflict that I'm having with somebody else is actually me, or the thought me, in conflict with the idea that I have about you. So the conflict goes on in me. Do you understand that? Yeah, it's usually, and it's usually what you think yourself not to be, so you get mad about. Whatever. Um, what the main thing? The, look, the main thing. To, the main thing to see is if you didn't have a story going on, mm. and I didn't have a story going on, could there be a conflict? No. No. Like there totally couldn't be a conflict. Mm. So what it is that hides that sense of presence or hides? What name do we want to give it? You know, <coughs> hides our true nature. Let's go there, okay? What we actually are. Well, anyway, what it is that hides that is we're so conditioned to be doing nothing but focusing on this here. All the time. All the time. We focus on it so much, we miss the world. We absolutely miss it. We miss the sound of birds, the wind, bl gentle b breeze blown across. We miss it all. We, we miss it. Okay. Now, we've been conditioned to do that since we're this big. Just totally conditioned to do that, as is everybody else before them. So there's no one to blame. Okay? There's absolutely no one to blame. But when you, what, when you actually go looking for this actual me, this actual self, good luck trying to find it. Like, seriously, good luck trying to find it. And yet, you know, we just assume, of course I'm here. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, we say, you're not responsible for what you think. What a fucking load of rubbish. What? And it's no one it, too. No, no, <laughs> no. Tags on an and. No one else is thinking it. It's happening here, so I must be responsible for it. Okay, so if I believe that I'm actually responsible for everything that's going on up here, turn it off. Just stop it. See if you can. If you can actually stop it. Just go, look, you know what, I'm going to switch it off for the next 24 I'm going to have a break. I can switch it back on again, it'll be there again doing whatever it does. Yeah. I'm just going to turn it off just for 24 hours and chill, just relax and be. It's really interesting, like relax and be. That's your natural state, by the way. And what you find, just from pure investigation, we can't do that. We can't, can't do that. If I had control over what it was that was going on between my ears, right, I'd be thinking nothing but the best fucking thoughts I could possibly think of. I would be in a state of bliss. All my thoughts would be blissful. I would think and believe and absolutely know, according to my thoughts, I'm not separate from everyone. I love everyone. What a beautiful universe this is. And be patting myself on the back all the time. You're great, Terry. You know, whatever. You know? And interestingly enough, I can't do that either. So <clears throat> the notion that it's me doing the thinking is totally absurd when you look and investigate, really look, like I was talking about earlier, being honest, looking and investigating and seeing for yourself. They just come, whatever it is, and they go. They don't stay there forever. They don't. All yesterday's thoughts are gone. Gone. To like gone. <laughs> you know, have new ones that will come up today and slightly different flavour and smell, whatever. Yeah. Then they'll float through and they'll go. We're not doing it. You're not doing it. You're not actually doing it. Yeah, I do believe that. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I believe... I know I said believe, but that's like, okay. let's not get caught up on that. You know, you know that. That's okay. Yeah, as you know. I know that to be true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's still, they're still anchoring. Still anchoring? Yeah. Great, okay. So what so, are the... Great. Hold on, hold on. That's great. Yeah. Okay? You need to now see, what are they anchoring to? So you need to look closer. Do you understand? Yeah. There's, a, there's just a little bit closer. Yeah. And then you find that you'll look a little bit closer. And then you'll find 
you look a little bit closer. And the closer, the further back, if you like, <laughs> love that, the further back that you go in terms of the observation, the more laser pointed it becomes and the less uh, hectic it becomes because you're no longer in interested in the content of what's going on in your head. You're more, now more interested in trying to find where is this me? Where is it and what is it? Where is it? Where's its centre? Where does it locate itself? Yeah, we had this conversation for like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> I was okay. like, the brain? Is it the brain? Maybe we're the brain. Because I was like, okay, I had to really think about it. Because, you know, like people are like, okay, where, where, who are you? And everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not that, I'm not that. And I'm listening to people being like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't even, I'm not even there yet. Like, we keep jumping like four steps back. And I'm, I have to really think about it sequentially. So if I'm not the body, if I'm not the body, what could it be? And I'm like, so I really had to think really hard about it instead of just saying yes all the time. So am I the brain? And then we went through that for how long? A while. A while. <laughs> it's basically my idea, a way of communicating it was, if you can view it as an object, that isn't you. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, oh, thought that appears, that can be an object, not you. Body can appear as an object, not you. Mm -hmm. And you just keep on going back and back and back until you reach that, which oh, cannot be an object. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm quite smart at trying to like go around that. Like I'm like he's like, Well, are you conscious? And I'm like he's like, What do you say? Can consciousness arise in the body or can the body, body arise, arise in, in consciousness? consciousness? Yeah. And I was like, Well, I've seen you asleep and I've seen you wake up. <laughs> Creating metal so, images to and be. And he's like, Yeah, but you're not me. Here's the, and I'm like, Yeah. Here's what I was talking yeah. about. Here's what I was talking about earlier. Okay? Yeah. You need to be dead honest. Yeah. In your inquiry, yeah. you need to be dead, dead honest. So if you don't know, you just say, I don't know. This yeah. is what comes into and, a lot of what and, we spoke about too. And leave it at that. Um, Kat mentioned it a couple of times. It's the importance of doubt. And it is integral. With even like Kieran saying earlier today, it's like, um, I don't want to offend you, she was saying to me, but I don't even, at times, I doubt you. I don't want to believe the things you've said about your experiences and realisations. And I'm so just like, That's great! Right. That is amazing! Mm. <laughs> Good, keep that question I doubt my everything. Own experiences I've had. Fabulous. Like, did I, is that, did Fabulous. that really happen? I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, and it, like I've, I've had what I would consider to be some quite like full on experiences. like things being alive and looking at me and you know mm. like that conversation we had yeah. last time yeah. Yeah. and then I'm like maybe that was just like my mind tripped out for a second that's mm. the past <laughs> but you know what I mean like yeah, yeah. fresh and new experience is ready now Bob did and you want to crazy. Yeah, yeah, Bob yeah. wanted to add something look at it ultimately there's no creator yeah no creation and no creature you and I and everything in the room the insects and everything are creatures and that's why they tell you in the scriptures it's the whole thing is Maya. What's happened? Nothing. Nothing has ever happened. It only appears. Maya is illusion. It's a phenomenal manifestation. And your dictionary definition of phenomena is that which appears to be. It's all appearing. But it's real in its essence, not the way it appears. The essence behind it all is reality. And that's no thing. Mm. No thing ever happened. We must we say nothing taking that to be a vacuum and a void, but it doesn't mean that it's no thing, no pattern, shape or form has really happened. That's why they call this the waking dream. When you go to sleep at night and dream something, you can, a world can be created in that dream, you can be in all sorts of places doing all sorts of things. When you wake up, what happens to it? It disappears. Why? Because it was my illusion. We're left with this waking dream. Now, if your dream continued every night from where it left off, could you tell the difference between that and this one? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is a crucial point when, because I, I could see, I could feel that Bob moved when you said the brain. Bob often points out that the, if not for life, the brain would be would would start stinking, would start decomposing. <laughs> So it is really like everything relies on that life force, on that, on that movement of life. Yeah, and what we got to was, well, okay, so the brain, like we were talking about, <coughs> the, 
something still has to energize the brain. Yes. So the brain can't be you. That's right. And yeah. so then I like with what something you said <coughs> last week really hit home when when you were talking about um is it the thought as a sense. Thought as a sense. And mm, I was like, oh, oh yeah. That makes so much sense to me. Mm. Because if it's a sense then and we're not the thoughts and we're not the brain, then we have to be awareness because all there is is senses. So yeah. if there's thought, sight, so, all of that, yes. it's, it's all mm. sensations. The only mm. thing that can know sensations is awareness. You yeah. can only be aware of sensations. Mm. So that's as far as I got. Beautiful. Like, okay, what so-called right. things appear in what we call the mind. And show me a mind. There is no such thing as mind apart from thought. We call it my mind, but the mind is only thought. Which particular thought are you if you are the mind? Yeah. I think there's a slippery slope where people go from where there's an automatic check-in with what's that an experience, and then it slips into intellectualization. Yeah. And I think that happens when we start to talk about mirrors and awareness and things like that. So, um, you know, um, Terry was listing a bunch of things, you know, what's experience, what's experience, what's experience. But then, and you before were listing identifications, but then when you get down to the identification of identifying with being alive or being dead, I think people can slip into the mind at that point and say, oh, well, there must be existence, therefore I'm alive, and it's just all head stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's like, when you're not thinking about it, there's no alive or dead. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. just no... Oh, yeah. This pure experience of some yeah. sort, you know, which you can't bound or label. So really, to me, awareness doesn't work. To ride to me, I'm slipping into intellectualization at that point. It's just the full stop. Really, is the only thing that actually rides here. Totally, but as far as like the conversation, that's where I got to. Yeah. Like that, I could agree. Yeah. Um, honestly, within myself. Yeah, because you're I going back with. to experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you probably. I have to forget about it. And just yeah, because own. it becomes an intellectualization yeah. at some I'm, point. It's I'm, discerning yeah. that, ah, oh, that's going to, so just come back to experience. Yeah, because I know I'm not going to get to the truth that I I can't intellectualize. I think you're waiting there. I know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But like, um, like we're talking about spontaneous questions, Bob. Like mm. um, when I was meditating, I brought this up last week too, but I don't know um, how much was talked about it. But I was meditating like a few weeks ago and I, like just by meditating, just sitting, eyes closed, noticing things. And then the moment I stopped noticing things, I heard this question that said, how can you be in something and of something at the same time? And I know it wasn't me that asked it because the moment that I heard it or thought it, I was like awe inspired. I was like, whoa, that's (laughs) such an amazing question. And it snapped me out of that mindlessness that I was in at that time. Like, mm. I was like, all of a sudden I was back in my body and I was like, well... And I'm like, do you answer that? Or do you... <laughs> Whenever so, I am I meant to try and think phone. about the answer or do I let the answer just go away? Whenever I've heard that one, it's like, oh, he just doesn't want to try to sort that out. So I just... I know, I tried. Around. And I was like, I said, I, it's, I, not, I it's not working here, so, you know, it's not I don't feel here. like I'm meant to answer yeah. it, but the <laughs> question just... Let answer. He wants to say something. Mm. Did you try and... Thinking, latching onto it in the concept of time. And when you look at it at time, there's no such thing as time either. Time is just a mental concept. Is there a past if you don't think about it? Or is there a future if you don't think about it? You'll tell me I was in the past. I'll say, well, try and live a moment ago. Try and live yesterday, last week, in the future. Well, try and live when you leave here. Or next week. You can imagine the future and anticipate it, and you recall the past. But the actuality is always this presence. Like that, we call it presence, but bring into that pre sense before any sensations arise on it. But the question she had when the question arise in that silence and mindlessness, the question completely took her out of the of that state of no mind. Should she look for the answer for a question, or should she recognize question as question, or what? Well, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> ask yourself who's asking that question. Mm. It wasn't me because, like, I wouldn't, I can't create. Like yeah. nothing I th- well, think that I thought, I've been like, whoa. Well, if you say but it's not me, yeah, wouldn't you let it go right there and then? Who's having it? Settle down and see if it persists, or an answer comes up of itself. So you kind of knew that it wasn't your question. You kind of knew that it was just question floating in the air, yeah. in the awareness. Yeah, I heard it. I yeah. 
but it didn't bother you. You did, if it wasn't yours, yeah, cool, that's fantastic. This is precisely what it is to be. Recognize things for what they are. If the question floats in the air, oh, question floating in the air. But the question says da, da, da. Who cares? It's nobody here to care. It's like, it, it, yeah, I know, Tony, it was exactly what you were saying. Like, just don't go to the mind and, and chew on it. Just recognize question floating in the air. Cool. If there is no questionnaire having that question, there's no one who has the problem. No question or no question, where's the sense of separation? I wonder why it suddenly means something that points to nothingness, you know? One, one may never do that, that question. Yeah, I just thought of a box. Because I've had that question. In the box, the the me, in the box. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, and how? And I just remember thinking, well, yeah, you're right, that's crazy. <laughs> but that's as far as it went. And then, like, I don't feel, like, I haven't felt like I need to. I tried to meditate on it once, I was like, no. It's not going to mm. So it just was too much effort. I was like, no, I Beautiful. This is exactly, exactly. The less you chew on whatever the content of the mind, the lighter, the happier, the more blissful the life becomes. Yeah. The less chewing. Like, this is what Tony was saying. If you find a way not to go to the mind, if you find a way not to, uh, whatever is happening, not to think about it, come back to full stop, to the silence, and not to think about it. It will resolve its, uh, itself because everything does. It's just the thinking that conceptually we live the life as it is, as it is happening, and we go and imagine things because thinking is basically imagining. So if you can stop yourself to go to the head and keep resolving the imaginary issues, wonderful. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes it is going on, the movement of the mind is going on. And after a while you recognize, oh yeah, right, that was this bzzz going on, fine, cool, now it's past, now I'm aware. So it is important not to actually dwell in the past, oh, I shouldn't have spent so much time chewing on it. Yeah. Because that's counterproductive, that you are focusing on, uh, you're chewing more on it actually, when you analyze the past. I was talking about fear, and I was like, yeah, I was mad at myself for being afraid. Exactly. And also, the mind is absolutely wonderful. Like All creative processes are coming in the mind. And giving a space and being aware of that absolute beautiful creativity and ha being happy for it to happen. Ultimately, the freedom is freedom from preference, whether the mind is quiet or the mind is chatting. Whether there is a mental noise going on or there is no mental noise going on, who cares? If there is nobody who cares... I don't even try to silence the mind. Why? It doesn't bother me. It's not my mind. It's just, a, it's just a stream of thoughts. Who cares? That's the freedom. Because very often people are looking for the way to stop thinking or to think less. And initially, that's, that's where the life is directing them and they are struggling and fighting and they tire themselves and exhaust themselves and they give up. <laughs> or they don't. Whatever. Some people get some results. Fine. That's what life does. But ultimate freedom is freedom from everything from having a preference whichever way the life appears to itself there's nobody who is to judge it there's nobody who is to complain about it okay this is what is chatter okay silence okay nobody cares it's nobody home that's what what is is means unaltered unmodified uncorrected no preference no partiality no comparison just have everything as it is without putting any of those concepts on yeah. And just to acknowledge where you were talking from, it seemed to me that in those times, and it's quite often like that for me, you just notice that it's popping up and you notice that the brain uh, nah, doesn't want to go there. So it's, it seems like you already have that experience of it just coming already as yeah. it is. Yeah. Mm, at least sometimes, you know, you, yeah, just, just in case you have a trigger of not being heard, like I, <laughs> I picked up the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You can take the halfway through part I was talking about, like the middle step, you know, you're already experiencing some of that. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm. So can I, could I just, um, I want to ask you two questions. Sure. Okay. And I want you to try and notice the internal difference from both these questions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So first question. Are you aware of self? Yourself. Sit there for a second. Okay. 
second question. Hmm? What is that self? What's going on now compared to the first question? I've got this, all this cold energy running on my back. That's yeah. all I can say, but there was, I, there was nothing happened there. Okay. So you'll generally, you're generally find that uh, innately or intuitively, <clears throat> when we're asked that question, and I could take that somewhere else too, but I won't tonight, but <clears throat> when we're asked that question, you know, another way I put it, are you here? Do you exist? Yep. And generally there's quiet after that. Nothing else kind of goes on. Just, yep. Then there's a stillness. And then the next question is, okay, so if I ask you to describe what that self is, oh my God. <laughs> the, the internal dialogue that will all of a sudden get triggered and off you'll go. See, that didn't happen. Sure. It was just like bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> cold, cold, in, like cold. cold, coldness. Okay, so look. Initially, what we generally get in, in the, on this search, okay? Generally what we get, which is kind of what I'm hearing coming from you, is... Initially, what we try and do is we try and get our head around this intellectually. And I'm not saying that's the wrong thing to do. I'm not. That just seems to be par for the course that we kind of do that. Mm. Yeah. At some point, at some point, you're going to become more interested in that awareness than you are in thought. Because at the moment, like I was saying, saying earlier you know is the moon here no you've heard people say when they're sitting in meditation sit there and watch the thoughts come and go just watch the thoughts just don't hook onto them don't name them don't 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 yeah just watch them come and go it astounds me <laughs> that all of the people that have done that even you know at a beginner stage, it astounds me that no one's put their hand up and said, "Excuse me, teacher, who or what is it that is, is aware of these thoughts that I'm watching coming and going?" No one does it. No, no one does it. And like you said, to be aware of something, you've got to be separate from it. Yet we don't. We don't ask that. Qu like we don't even. We're not even aware that we're aware. Do you understand? We're not even aware that we're aware. We're so caught up in the illusion that's going on in here, and then we use that illusion to create reality out there. <laughs> like. Bob wants to add something? Yeah. Not awareness of self, it's the self that is aware. It's the one self that that's aware. Everything is appearing in that self-awareness. We give it no attention. It's unbelievable. And you're right on it. Like, mm -hmm. God, I'm really sick with that. Like, really sick with that. If, if you can be aware of it, it means you've got to be separate from it. Yeah. You have to be, to be aware of it. Yep, that singularity, that single state, if you like, that non-dual state, if you like, there's no splits in it. There's no one in there, in that single singularity, going, this is my singularity. <laughs> this is who's singularity. There's just one. Yeah? Just one. Then there's a split off. Seems to be a split off. But if you actually look and sit with and start to sit with that awareness you'll discover a couple of things. Number one, it's not conditioned. There's no story around it. You know, it's not, my awareness is really good, or my awareness has got low self-esteem. There's no story around it. It's clear, like really clear and clean. Yeah? So there's no story around it. Uh, it's not conditioned. In other words, it's not split when you're there. So there's no story and it's not split and it's not conditioned. 
sit with it. Actually, you're onto it. Sit with it. Sit with it. Like really, sit with it. And that's you're... basically all I have to do because, long story short, about 12 years ago, I had what may be called a non-dual awakening and I recognised this is it, that's it. I was actually walking down the street and I just started cracking up laughing. I must have looked like a madman. <laughs> And there was a complete fall away of personal self. There was suddenly no more centre. And it was a very confusing, very confusing time. Mm. And after that, there was this massive unloading and all this other stuff happened. But I guess over time, that personal sense of self kind of crept back in a bit. I have always had... like What was realised that day has never left. It is always here. It's always present. And it can be accessed, I suppose you could say... So there's almost still remains a duality between personal self and that which has been realised, even though I know there isn't. <laughs> mm. So I see, I, I think, fun. all that I have fun. to do is abide as that, and that's... <laughs> and, <laughs> absolute, and absolutely nothing else. Yeah. yeah. He knows nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> and you live in the world and abide like that, absolutely. and there's nothing else. Absolutely. Because stuff, you're, everything that we do in the world, like everything that we do in the world, is totally spontaneous anyway. There's no me here. But even the presence or the sense of objects requires history and understanding how we function in the world if we don't, if we, if we know this is a couch, we have to get a label to use it. No, We're just present it. with the uh, object the itself. I know, without... I know you think that. I know you think that. Can I, well... Yeah, go for it. Sorry. What I'm thinking... Apologies. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. What, I'm, what I'm thinking is, like, even for me to be able to use this couch in a functional way, I have to recognise the label, I have to recognise the history, because if I didn't know the history of a couch, I wouldn't know what it was. How about the cut? Is there like are the two cat? cuts going around, and <laughs> yeah. they use the couch, Much and they, they don't even know the name of the couch, and yeah. they still use it. Yes. Spontaneous functioning. Because to me, it seems like, and this is... Mm. That's what I would like to learn. So yeah. For me, it seems like if I just shut down that history, that understanding, that logic of what those objects are, then I could, I would just be in some sort of state of emptiness. It's not blitz. that. Yeah. It's not. No, no. Okay, got it. it that, that, that's not what's being said. Okay. That's totally not what's being said. Okay. There's still <clears throat> going to be, you know, uh, there's still going to be contained a, a memory. That's a couch. Yeah. Oh, it seems to be about. Yeah. I'm, guess, I'm guessing it's ten years old. You know, there's still going to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, you're still going to know to, to walk out the door and navigate through the door. You're yeah. still going to know when you get in the car what to do and, and yeah. away you go. That's, that's uh, what you were touching on before. That's like the sixth sense. Yeah. There's a knowing. There's an innate intelligence which has got nothing to do with the personalised me that thinks it's somewhere centred in here calling the shots. So... That understanding or that knowledge or that knowing, it doesn't go. Mm -hmm. What drops away is the illusion of a me. Mm -hmm. That's all. That drops away or that's seen through, if you like. Well, seen for what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a personal self is trying to know what's the couch and what you've got to do and all the rest of it. But as I say, he's saying it just happens without relating to that personal self. You see, there's no personal self there. There never was. There's no such thing as an ego when you look into it. We've all taken on board the belief that there is something solid and substantial there and get caught in that. And that ego or the me is the personal soul. But there's only one self. And the person is a fiction also. Persona, the mask, it's a conceptual image we put on ourselves, learned from some language, the word is persona, person. There's no person. Uh, what's breathing you right now? What's beating your heart? What's growing your hair fair in your fingernails? What's living you? What's going to use the, the terms or the labels to do what you've got to do with the couch or whatever? And also the, the, uh, the cent centre of Bob's teaching is you are already that. You don't have to switch off your brain. You don't have to stop thinking. You don't have to stop labelling. As you are already you are the manifestation and expression of that power of life it is a little bit over like covered up with the with the narrative 
But if you recognize the narrative for what it is, just a narrative, that's all that needs to be done. Narrative doesn't even have to be switched off. And I like that Tony is constantly bringing the one of the most powerful, potent uh, pointers that Bob is using. What's wrong with right now if you don't think about it? If you stop thinking for one second just to find out if you're still alive, you'll find out, yes, you're still alive. Without thinking, you are still seeing and recognizing everything in the room. Without thinking, you recognize the sounds. Without thinking, like, you know, this conceptual narrative overlaying the, the reality. The body is breathing, is, is seeing, is hearing. Everything is happening. So not only you are already that, the only thing, the only difference between you and Bob is that you may still believe there is a Santa Claus or there is a doer inside the body. And this is the only one belief. When that belief falls away, the world looks just like at this moment. The sounds sound just like at this moment. And the thinking is such a wonderful capacity. It's just when we recognize, ah, this is thinking. Okay, so now it doesn't really... Yeah, but it's, it's a good line of thinking, and it's wonderful that you investigate that and that you question that, because it very often gets confused that, oh, yeah, thinking is wrong, we have to suppress it. No, we just have to recognize it for what it is, thinking. And it's not, not even necessarily suppressing it. It's what happens if you do that. Yeah. So what happens if you just drop all labels? You can't do that. Yeah, you, you can try. I mean, you can temporarily do it if you smoke salvia divinorum or something like that. <laughs> but apart from that, is that's, you know, like you can't stop body from sweating or salivating if you see lemon. The same brain world, mind If works. you stop thinking, oh, I'm breathing, do you stop breathing? Yeah. If you stop thinking... I'm breathing, I'm, my, I'm beating my heart. Yeah. Stop that. Do, mm. Does it stop? Imagine if Tiger Woods has dropped all his thinking, he'd probably swing much better. Tiger Woods, well, there's a bit you're training in the body, you know? There's a bit training just how to grab the stick, there's training. Like, I don't have any memories of really thinking, I'm going to walk through that gap. Or I don't even have memories of knowing, because knowing to me can be a bit intellectual too, because I tend to put agency into it. If, even without that concept of knowingness, mm. there's still this movement to go through that gap of this kind of immediacy. You just mm. does it. Mm. And sometimes you jump out of bed and go, shit, I wasn't going to get up right now and go to the toilet. Mm. Mm. Standing. You're doing it. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> there's an innate intelligence. <laughs> there's an innate intelligence that we are completely unaware of. Mm. We're not even aware that it's functioning. It's like tapping into that innate intelligence for you, for what you do every day. So in terms of the self and the ego planning for the future, would you drop all planning? There is no... Th that in mm. You see, it was just by the me needing to run things. It just happened anyway. There's, n there's not a self or a me or an ego mm. doing or planning anything. And needed to drop it either. And Which means that mm. it, we think we've been told and conditioned to believe that we have an ego. No one's ever been able to show me an ego. Mm -hmm. Ever. It's a concept. It's an idea that we've taken on. And the thing that I wanted to point out to you before was I'm absolutely nowhere near, I'm talking about my me, okay? Mm -hmm. I am nowhere near intelligent enough to be able to f uh, orientate this body through the world. No. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> and, and, and it... And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there is, there's something else that moves this body, if you like, that if I'm not aware of that something else, me will take credit for it, just like that. It'll totally take credit for it. But when you actually watch, like, watch, yeah, watch what this body does throughout the course of the day and the, the thousands of different things that just the body is doing and we're not even home mm. <laughs> we're not even home you know i don't know i'm Driving sure i'm sure you, you would have experienced it catching a ball you know, mm -hmm. take yeah pages of yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. i don't know I, I, i'm sure you've experienced this but you know you'd be you'd be driving especially if you're doing country driving i'm sure you've experienced it you'd be driving 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 and then all of a sudden you kind of come out of it and you go where, where have i been like where am I? Autopilot. I've heard of people parked in the garages. Oops, how did that? <laughs> and, it, and even to 
even to, you know, if I was in charge of this body, <laughs> mate, it would be a nightmare trying to drive a car. I'd, I'd be just thinking about every single solitary thing that, that I, you know, and, and look, and if that was the case, it'd probably be better because my attention wouldn't be on that. <laughs> All this stuff, this crazy stuff, that go, I'd, be, I'd certainly be in the present, just functioning and doing and... So there's an innate intelligence that, that it works. And it's that same innate intelligence yeah. that's rolling the Earth around the sun. Yeah. It's forming planets and stars, doing everything, causing the tides to come in and out. Same intelligence is sort of suffusing, patterning that body and everything else in this manifestation. It's the one essence appearing, patterning and shaping and forming as everything. And you are that. That's the main thing. Start know that you are that. I am that. Not the body, not the mind, but that innate intelligence. <laughs> and the same innate intelligence also does the planning. So if if uh, because people often have the uh, have the impression that okay now I should live in the moment and I should stop planning. You can't stop planning same way as you can't stop the sun or the planets to move around. The same intelligence expresses as thoughts, as of the movement of seasons. The one thing you can wake up to it. You can just see it. Just see it for what it is. Don't try it to suppress it. Don't try to stop it because you can't do it. You are you have no power as the entity. You can do anything can't do anything about it. When you see the planning is going on, recognize it for what it is. Oh, planning is going on. You may very quickly realize that once the habit pattern, the mechanical habit pattern is seen in the light of consciousness, it won't go on mechanically that much anymore. It will dissolve and very often those patterns, they just break down and they are not there anymore. But it doesn't mean that now we have to stop desiring or stop the attachment or stop planning. We can't do it like Terry described. If he could change his thoughts, he would only have the blissful thoughts. But he can't. And desires and planning, they're just part of the, part of the activity. It's just like sweating or salivating with the lemon. It's, it happens. But it can be recognized. But once you're aware of it, the type of planning changes. So once you have that awareness, this. you recognize it. Because I'm just thinking, well, some of, that, some of that conditioning is all unconscious and it's trained. So beating your heart isn't, obviously, in breathing. But a lot of what we're talking about, driving and all the rest, is actually trained unconscious mm -hmm. habits. Yeah, you become right. easy. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm trying to get to where's the line between the, the things that are, you know, innate and that we're tapping into. So with planning, if I'm planning something mm -hmm. and it's kind of, and I'm working hard and I've, you know, worked so hard and I've done all this planning years and years ago and then it all just collapses and all the way it's like trying to push spaghetti uphill. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and then other times, I've, when I've dropped all of that and then... I've changed careers, I've changed all and, and all of a sudden things just happen. Mm. Yeah. So, so there's still some planning involved. Yes, yes. That's, but it's, that's beautiful. Yes, that's and that, that's so, that's great. Mm. What all you need to recognise is that there is no you there seemingly doing the planning. That doesn't mean planning stops. That doesn't mean a thought stops. That doesn't mean an idea will stop. But you're not doing it. And test it. Next time you're absolutely locked in really hard to something that seems extraordinarily important to you. And I mean extra, like the most important thing you've got going on in your life. And I'm planning and I've got to get from here to there. Nothing's getting in my way. And off you go and you do it. Yep. In the middle of it, just stop, turn around, walk away from get that. See if you can. You can't. Yeah. See if you can. I mean, it's your plan. It's your desire. It's your... And after all, I'm in control. Really? Try not doing it. Like, really. And you'll just find... You, you, you're driven. You're just driven. And all the thoughts... What needs to be seen... Look, really. What really needs to be seen, which will really help is that all the thoughts, all the plans, all the ideas that come up in your head, they come up in and of themselves, by themselves. They're impersonal. There's no you there choosing, now I'm going to think this thought. Because if there was a you there choosing, now I'm going to think this, this thought, you'd sense the separateness of it. There'd be a creator over here somewhere going, all right, this is what, and I just said before, I'm not smart enough. 
I'm not smart enough, right? But there'd be some sort of creator sitting here, and I'm in dialogue with somebody, and the creator's going, oh, quick, quick, now say this. Say this and say that. <laughs> and you won't find anybody. We think, we believe, it's the me doing that. That's why we get asked to go looking for it. Like, literally, go looking for it. And what I did then was just kind of give you a bit of a, a conceptual idea of the me, if you like. Going, yeah, I'm choosing to do this. Yeah, Quick, say this, Terry. And, and out it comes and it's too fast. It's way too far, way too fast. So what you'll start to see is thoughts just spontaneously arise and disappear all by himself. Words that come out of your mouth, like the words that are coming out of my mouth. Now, I didn't sit in my car before I walked in the door here, knowing you were going to turn up and go, right, I'm going to rehearse this now. And when he says this, I'm going to say that. And it's totally spontaneous. There's, it's too quick. Do you understand? There's no me here separate from going, okay, he said that. Because right. you know, if there was, I'd need time to think about it for a moment. Now, how often... How often have you thought of an appropriate thing to say hours later? Yeah. And you know what? And the truth, Tony, the truth, Tony, is what actually came out of us was the appropriate thing. It's the only thing. The only thing. It's the only thing that, not a good nor bad, that is what it is or what it was for whatever reason. And just one other quick perspective on that is that we're just so trained that the activity now is not an, is, is not enough. We stop now the activity, we don't even need an intelligence driving things. That's just extra stuff. What's now is it. Yeah. Yes, so uh, we are over time, so we will have to come back again. Bob is uh, showing me that. So basically, it is all, it's not about altering, modifying, changing anything. It's about recognizing, which means cognizing again, which means innately we all know it. There is all knowing. So whatever shows up is just to be recognized, means known again, doesn't have to be changed. There's no suppressing, there is no. And then, yeah, welcome everyone. We have meetings on uh, Thursdays and Sundays also. And <laughs> spontaneity is not a concept of time. <laughs> yes. Spontaneity is not a concept. Of time. Oh, time. No, not in Yeah, there is no time. Yet not you can still come back. time. <laughs> you can still come back on Thursday or Sunday, even though there is no time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, really, nice, really nice line of questioning. Though.